I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on matrices. We are now learning linear transformations and we are applying it to vectors. I'll keep it very simple. I'll just work with the coordinate points. I hope you're following me with this series and that should help you to quickly get on to the most complicated topics and the most interesting topics about linear algebra. We'll now see how to create a transformation matrix which can perform vertical shear or horizontal shear. So let me first explain these two terms. What do they mean? Let us take a unit circle. Uh, let's take a square. That'll be easy, right? So let's take a circle. So for that, let's take a unit square. Okay. Let us say this is our unit square. In this case, the points could be written as these two points. We could write this value as 1, 0. And here we could write this as 0, 1, right? Now, when we perform vertical shear, it basically means that the structure has been shifted or pushed upwards, kind of like this, right? So the whole thing seems to have been pushed upwards. So the result could be something like this. Let's draw some parallel lines and then work it, something like this. So that is the vertical shear which we are talking about. Now the idea here is how do we get a transformation matrix which can perform such an operation. So linear transformations, zero will remain at zero, right? Okay, so when this operation is performed, if we notice that this particular point here is now, uh, let's say, still it is at uh, x value of 1, however the y value has increased. Okay, so let us assume this value to be, uh, let's say, 2, right? Scale is not proper, but let's assume this to be 2. So I could write this point as 1, 2, right? As far as this point is concerned, we could write this as 1, 3. Okay. Now, let's try to understand how to write a transformation matrix which can perform this operation, and that will be your transformation matrix responsible for vertical shear. Is that clear to you? Okay. Let's also talk about the horizontal shear. And then we'll move on to a fresh page to discuss it further. Okay. So let us say we have a figure which is something like this. And we kind of push it horizontally this time. Horizontal shear means applying a force in this particular direction so that it gets deformed. And what we get here is uh, something which is uh, more like this. Do you see that? Perfect. So that will be treated as horizontal shear. So again, we are taking for simplicity uh, unit square, right? In that case, if I assume that this point is, we can call this point any point, right? So, so at the y value, of course, is 1, correct? The x value has changed. So let's say this time the x value is uh, is 2, right? So it could be written as this. Perfect. So, so that is the new figure which we have got. And this coordinate here will help us to create our transformation matrix for horizontal shear. Now let us see how we can create the transformation matrix from the given information, right? Okay, let's take vertical shear now. So let me again sketch this and look into the same diagram which we had just now, uh, slightly better in scale. So this time uh, we'll try to make it like uh, we wanted to write two, right? But last time uh, that so let's say this is this is this is one, so that becomes two. Is it okay? So what we get here is once we push it upwards, what we what becomes of this is 
something like this, it becomes a shape in this fashion. You get the idea, right? This is better. So here, let us assume that this point here is at 1, this is at 1, and that point after this stretch is 1 and the y value is 2, and this is uh, 1 y value is 3, okay. Here this is 1, 1, okay. So that is our original green square, and we applied a vertical stress to change the shape as shown here. Now what are we looking for? We are looking for this transformation matrix. What should this be? So that we get that kind of a transformation. How do we work out? That is what we are looking for. I hope the question or our objective is absolutely clear. Right? So the best way to do is think like vectors. Let us say this is our unit vector i, right? So th and this is our unit vector j. Right, so so we know unit vector i will think it is in the position which is one zero, right? And that is the unit vector j. So we'll say the vector j. So we write j cap and i cap will be will be zero one. Now once the transformation is applied, then what happens? Well, once the transformation is applied, we see that the position changes. As far as this position is concerned, it remains same. So after the transformation, as far as the unit vector j cap is concerned, it remains at 0, 1. However, this position here changes to, to that position, correct? So this new position which has been taken is, is 1, 2. Now these two help us to identify these values directly, correct? So we can now write down our transformation matrix from here. So our transformation matrix is what? It is this change which is 1, 2 and that changed value which is 0, 1 and that could be actually applied to any value to show this kind of a vertical shear. You understand? Correct. So we get our matrix which could perform this kind of a transformation. Now as an exercise, what you can do is, you can apply this to the set of points and see, do we really get the new set of coordinate points? Okay, so we are saying that is the transformation matrix. So let's test it out. So we'll apply this to the point 1, 1. So what do we get? We get 1, 2, 0, 1. That is our new transformation matrix. And we are applying it to the point 1, 1. So the new coordinate point after transformation should be 1 times 1, which is 1, plus 0 times 1, which is 0, right? And then when you do it with 2, we get 2 times 1, which is 2 plus 1 times 1, which is 1. So what we get here is, is 1, 3. And that is what it is, correct? 1, 3. So it works. Now you can test this out for many points. You can just create on your own and then work it out, correct? In short, I could write this transformation matrix as, in general, I could write this as, now in this case it was 1, 2. So it could be any other position. It could be 1 times k, right? So I could write this as 1 times k, 0, 1, right? So that could make a change so that the points now will be, this point will not be 1, 2, but it is going to be 1, k, right? So that could be, a general equation for a vertical shear of this kind, right? So I hope that concept is clear. Now let's take what happens when we are looking into horizontal shear. So horizontal shear basically means that the, the object 
has been pushed horizontally, right? So if I have an object here, now in that case, what really happens is that it's being pushed in this this fashion. So the, the new position could now be shown as kind of like this. Do you see that? So that is what we mean by saying horizontal shear. Now in this case, if I apply the information which we worked with earlier, this point here, considering that to be I cap, right? So you could then, you could just think, if even if it is a bigger shape, think about the unit vector in the x direction, right? And the unit vector j cap in the y direction. Think this is j cap. Then it really solves all the problems and help you create your transformation matrix. Correct? Let's see how once again. So this vector will be 1, 0 to start with and that will be 0, 1. Now if I change this position, what happens? So this position here is what? Uh, let's say this position is some value of x, we are calling this as b, right? So let's say it is b, but the y value still is 1, right? So I will write this as column matrix b1, correct? As far as this position is concerned, it remains at 1, 0 itself. So that means the transformation matrix, this time which I'm looking into, is the combination of these two. It is 1, 0 and it is B1. So if I apply this transformation to any point, in that case, what do I get? In that case, I will get the X value changed to 1, 0 times x and the y value will actually change to b1, correct? And we'll get a result. I hope that works. Perfect. So that is how a transformation, which is a horizontal shear matrix, can be produced. Simple observations on this diagram will help you to do so. So I hope that is straightforward and clear. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Now with this, you could extend this to an exercise and find the coordinates of point Q after this transformation has been applied. I hope that helps. Thanks a lot and all the best.